This is Alan Scraw, director of the National Hog Division for the National Farmers Organization. We're going to bring you an update on just exactly what is happening in hog bargaining across the United States. We have signed many contracts with packers, and we are in the process of filling these. However, we have got to fill them to completion. We cannot come up with a portion of the numbers, or half of them, or three-quarters of them, or 90% of them. They have to be filled 100%. It's no bluff, it's no propaganda, it's just the hard, cold facts that in order to renegotiate and improve upon these contracts, these contracts have got to be filled and filled 100%. There's no easy way about it. It's hard work and it's got to be done. We can go out here as individuals and call up a packing plant or a buyer and say, well, what will you give me today? And the guy says, I'll give you a quarter more than the NFO price, or I'll give you a quarter more than the competitive buyer down the road. And it really doesn't take a whole lot of ability or organization to do that. But to put together a contract that has a degree of permanence to it, and it amounts to thousands of hogs that's going to affect the price nationwide, takes an organized effort by hog producers all over the country. It isn't something that can happen as an individual talking to an individual buyer. These contracts must be improved upon until they become a cost of production formulation that is going to establish the cost of operation at that particular producer's farm. Now, I don't believe the futures, when they tell us that the market has got to go down for a ver a various reasons, which we're going to talk about later, because producers can organize and prevent the drop that is predicted. Under the NFO program, you have an option to sell on a live merit basis in most areas, and that will be expanded to all areas eventually. It will be expanded just as rapidly as we can find qualified people to grade and sort hogs to meet with the producers and explain to them just exactly which way their hogs will realize the most net dollars. Many collection points have these technicians working in them now, but this will be expanded to cover all areas. At the same time, when we move hogs, we have got to move hogs in the direction that they're going to have an effect on a national price level. If we moved hogs out of any one given area to nine different plants at exactly the same price, as far as bargaining is concerned, one direction or the other would have a greater effect on price. We're in position to forward contract hogs for producers. It doesn't cost any more. You don't have any margin money or call money. It just means that you contract your hogs at a preset price and deliver them at the specified time on the contract. We have an individual program where producers can work individually with the organization and develop a program that will relate and reflect the type of operation that they have got. So with the programs that are in effect now, we can service any hog producer in the United States. Now I want to introduce Walt Broughton administrative assistant in the hog department who is going to talk about the futures market and the market relationship. Thank you, Alan. Recently, October hogs broke $39 a hundredweight. That's up more than $5 since August 1st. Futures corn, on the other hand, has dropped 20 cents this past month. There's no doubt that the organizers in the country are having an effect. Traditionally, when this situation existed, relatively high hogs, cheap feed grains, Producers uh, keep their hogs longer, causing heavier hogs. When these heavier hogs hit the market, price breaks will change and the overall price structure will collapse. We recommend that you market your hogs on schedule to avoid the price breaks and to continue to carry the momentum on the present market that you have had a part in establishing. From the comment that Walt made about August 1 with the price change, it might be interesting to note that at that point in time, the third contract had been ratified by NFO members in the United States. Now, this caused a substantial reaction in price that shouldn't happen. Generally, cheap grain means cheap hogs. You do have the power to do it. To facilitate this, the National Board met for a period of time. They recessed, went to the country to talk to producers, came back into session, and decided to make available to you which a one-year membership agreement which will automatically terminate at the end of that year. This will give you the opportunity to be a part of the organization for one year, to work with the programs, 
and not be uh, fearful of being in the organization for any length of time or not being fearful of the fact that you'd have a three-year contract, but it gives you the opportunity to help us get a shot at this hog market as well as the other programs. If we follow the futures market and the market drops as it does, it means bankruptcy for some people and cash flow problems for others. Our department, the hog division, must make plans now for an increase of 100% in volume of what we're doing now. We cannot sit by and let this price break. Sometimes it sounds like a big order, but the big orders broken down are not really that big. I'm going to talk about this in a minute. However, I want to illustrate another point. We've seen the market move. Negotiations are going on at the present time. Merle Sunken was out all last week. He talked to a number of additional packers. They want to supply of hogs from organized farmers, and he will be working on those in the next several weeks here. So in the meantime, we have got to put together a number of hogs, or we're not going to be in position to move on those particular negotiations. We have accepted and ratified a contract with several of the major packers and a number of intermediate uh, packers. This is probably the most significant thing that has ever happened to the hog department since its inception. It happened because of the producers in the country moving through the program. More hogs means more opportunity for producers. We're now in a position to build upon and expand these contracts, plus add these new ones that we're talking about. It can be done with additional production. We have made it easy for you as a non-member with the one-year agreement to have you become a part of this movement to price hogs. Every producer in your county must be asked to participate. Then we must go to the adjacent counties and ask them. We cannot sit back and say, well, their organization is not so good over there or it's not so good over here. We as producers must talk to every hog producer uh, up and down the road and ask them to be a part of the movement to price hogs in the United States. We want you to report daily so that we can give you an update of just exactly what position we are in relation to the total. We're putting together a list of 15,000 people that we're going to ask to move through the program. Pig America in their editorial quoted that 50,000 producers in the United States and nor in Canada controlled 80% of all the hogs. 30% of 50,000 is 15,000 producers. If you break that out on a per county basis on the 1,700 counties in the United States, it doesn't make a whole lot of producers in, in any one county. But the time is now, not when the hogs hit $29. Then it's too late to say, uh, do something, because at that point in time, we're experiencing uh, bankruptcies and cash flow problems. So as a non-member, you can help us by putting your production uh, with the organization. Go on to one-year agreement, put your hogs through on one of the contracts that we have available, and give us a shot. As a member, you should sign up 100% of your hogs now, because without your production on contract for sale, there is no way of knowing if it'll come, if it'll not come, you cannot bargain from a position of strength when you're wondering just exactly how many producers will be in the program tomorrow and how many will be the next day. We have got to know. We can win in 1977 and, put the, and prevent this price from dropping if we act now. If we won't, well, I don't know. Maybe. There's a lots of maybes. Maybe the price will go up because the corn man dried out. Maybe it'll go up because the Milo man dried out. Maybe it'll go up because your neighbor's hogs died of pseudo rabies. Maybe it'll go up because the people ate more pork. There's a lot of maybes. But let's do it from the position of a businessman, organize and price our uh, product, do it from a position of strength, talk to the other hog producers, and those of you that are serving as key coordinators, and any one of you can serve as a county hog coordinator simply by ta taking a copy of this tape, going to your producer neighbor, talk to him, ask him to be a part, ask him to call in some other producers, and then give us a call in the office with a daily report. We want to go out the week of August 29th with 400 producers talking to producers with the idea that we are going to put this thing together 
We want to increase our volume 100% uh, during that week, we want to know where we're going because I feel that 1977 is the year that we can price hogs if we've got the guts to get behind it and do it. This is Orrin Lee Staley, NFO president. Farmers and ranchers in this country face the most serious financial condition that they could possibly face. Statistics are now available showing that 10 to 20 percent of the farmers varying by states will not be able to refinance their operations, and another 10 to 20 percent are in a questionable category. Why? The prices farmers and ranchers are receiving is only about half what they expected to get for many of their products. The cost price squeeze of fixed costs that have continued to risen have really put them in a chaotic condition. What are they going to do about it? Everybody else prices their products. General Motors prices their automobiles, as all other large companies do. Labor bargains for their wages, but farmers and ranchers have gone to the marketplace and said, what will you give me? And now they're caught caught because they do not have the bargaining power as individuals or by areas to cope with and compete with the present economic situations. The NFO has built a nationwide collection dispatch and delivery system. This system gives NFO the capability to bargain effectively because it has a delivery system. Company president after company president in various commodities has told me time and again that they're not concerned about the price level they pay for farm products. They're concerned about whether the competitor can buy cheaper. This means you have to be nationwide with the capabilities of pulling production out of old marketing patterns. And if some company tries to buy cheaper, it simply means you have to have the capability to pull the production out of the old patterns into plants and into the marketing patterns that gives you an opportunity to price your products. The opportunity to price your products is based upon the ability and the recognition by farmers and ranchers to do, unite their production to be able to bargain collectively, to be able to announce their prices based on the cost of production plus a reasonable profit, and so that they together can make their prices stick and stand. The NFO has the structure and the system, the experience and the courage, but the most important thing is that now we also have contracts with three major companies covering almost all of the hog producing area that gives us enough money to work with so that we can be in the competitive ballpark of the existing prices while we are building collective bargaining to price our products. The ability to do this is the result of a system that has been built and a system that can be used. Farmers have the alternative do nothing or unite their production and price that production. The most important thing that the NFO has to offer, and the only thing it really has to offer, is the opportunity for farmers to unite their production nationwide so they can price their production. And that's what the hog producers must do, and that's what the NFO is all about. But it cannot be done by a handful of people. It requires the producers of hogs to decide that they're going to unite the hog production in this nation because nobody else is going to do it for them. This means we have to establish our priorities, and our priorities have to be based on the need. And right now the vital need is pricing our hogs based on the cost of production plus a reasonable profit, our agriculture will be destroyed.